A few days ago, Julian Brown of NatureJab powered up the world's first solar continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor, a machine that converts plastic waste into gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and natural gas. This means he can now break down the menace of plastic waste and transform it into a product that can be used by everyone, using solar panels as his primary source of energy. This appears to be a direct solution to one of the biggest challenges in waste management. Yet the story hasn't exploded across mainstream news and tech outlets. If a giant corporation like Shell or Tesla announced this, it would be front page news globally. This is puzzling, because plastic pollution is one of the biggest environmental challenges of our time. And here is someone offering a working pathway to to turn that waste into something valuable. So why is the world ignoring Julian Brown? I've gathered a number of reasons why, and I'd like to hear what you think about them in the comments. Humanity, you gave me $30,000 and I gave you my heart. You gave me your faith when I disappeared and I gave you my promise that I would never quit and never give up and now we are here after five years of hard work, eight months of back-breaking upgrades and labor, it is a last time to run the world's first solar continuous, say it with me, microwave pyrolysis reactor, baby, Mark 4.5. We are here. And when I turn this machine on, it will be history, not only because it is an invention and the first of its kind, but because this is sending a message to the world, letting the world know that we are done. It does not matter. We're not going to wait on some big corporation, some big government to do what needs to be done. If we need to do it ourselves, we would do it ourselves because this is our world. This is our earth. And we care and we protect it. And we protect and care for each other too. So, without further ado, desde mi corazón y mi alma. First of all, pyrolysis is not something new that was started by Julian. This method has existed for years, and lots of big companies have been said to have spent a lot of money on it. But they failed because the process requires a large amount of energy. The thermal decomposition of organic matter in the absence of oxygen has been a subject of intense academic and corporate research for decades. Brown himself acknowledges this, stating in an interview, I truly believe that it's a crime and that this technology is so well researched in science. And it's been around for so long, and yet people are hearing about it for the first time through me. This history is essential because it reveals the fundamental obstacle that has relegated pyrolysis to the sidelines for so long, a concept known as energy return on investment. The process requires a significant amount of energy to heat the plastic to the required temperatures, typically between 400 degrees Celsius and 700 degrees Celsius. A critical question is whether the energy value of the fuel produced is significantly greater than the energy required to collect, transport, process the plastic, and run the machine itself. For many past pyrolysis systems, the energy return on investment was low or even negative, and as such, they dropped the projects. The energy needed to power the reactor, combined with the energy consumed in the entire supply chain of gathering and preparing the plastic waste, often equaled or even exceeded the energy contained in the resulting fuel. A 2023 analysis by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory even suggested that, from a climate perspective, creating pyrolysis oil from used plastic can result in higher greenhouse gas emissions than extracting new crude oil from the ground. This inconvenient truth is why numerous large-scale corporate ventures into pyrolysis were quietly abandoned. They were economic and environmental dead ends. But for Julian Brown, who has just been experimenting passionately on pyrolysis without the same corporate baggage, he has found a way to power his reactor entirely on solar which saves a lot of the money one could spend on the heat energy required, and with time, making it commercially viable. His key innovation is a two-way attack on the energy return on investment problem. First, he uses microwaves, which he claims are a more efficient heating method because they heat the material from the inside out. Second, and more critically to his public narrative, he powers the entire system with an array of solar panels in his backyard. By using a free and renewable energy source, he reframes the technology as not just carbon neutral, but potentially carbon negative fundamentally altering the environmental and economic calculus. Another reason is the big oil companies that control global oil and fuel marketers, since those companies have invested billions into extracting, refining, and distributing fossil fuels. Any disruptive technology that promises to replace their product with waste-to-fuel alternatives becomes a direct threat. Unlike renewable energy companies that have slowly gained support through government incentives, plastic-to-fuel technologies challenge both the waste management industry and the fossil fuel industry at the same time. Supporting Julian's solution means reshaping existing supply chains, and the truth is, most governments and corporations aren't ready to make that shift. 
There's also the issue of narrative control. When a breakthrough comes from a company like Shell, Exxon, or even a high-profile tech giant, it instantly dominates headlines because the brand is trusted, resourced, and recognized. But when the innovation comes from a small independent inventor, skepticism takes over. People start questioning the scalability, safety, or environmental impact, even before giving it a fair chance. If Nature Jab were a Fortune 500 company, the same technology would likely be praised as revolutionary, with billions in investments following immediately. Another reason is the fact that in the past, pyrolysis experiments, the gasoline from plastic wasn't really gasoline. The liquid produced is not ready to use gasoline that you can pump directly into a modern car. The output is a synthetic crude oil, often called pyrolysis oil or syncrude. This oil is a complex mixture of different hydrocarbons and is often acidic, unstable, and contains contaminants from the original plastic, like chlorine from PVC, which creates hydrochloric acid. Putting raw pyrolysis oil into a modern high-compression car engine would likely cause severe damage very quickly due to corrosion and improper combustion. To become usable gasoline, diesel, or other specific fuels, this pyrolysis oil must undergo significant and expensive refining processes, similar to how crude oil is refined. This involves processes like hydro-treating to remove sulfur and other contaminants, and fractional distillation to separate the different fuel types. This refining step is an energy-intensive, technically complex and costly industrial process in its own right. But Julian Brown has found a way to convert it into safe, usable gasoline using vacuum distillation while doing the all process using solar panels. Another reason has to do with the harmful gases released during pyrolysis. Traditional pyrolysis methods often release harmful gases such as dioxins, furans, and other volatile organic compounds. The thermal decomposition of plastics, especially a mixed and contaminated feedstock that can contain chlorine from PVC, flame retardants, and other additives, has the potential to create some of the most toxic chemical compounds known to science. Polychlorinated dibenzo-p-dioxins, PCDDs, and polychlorinated dibenzofurans, PCDFEs, commonly known as dioxins and furans, are of particular concern. They are persistent organic pollutants that are highly toxic, bioaccumulate in the food chain, and are classified as known human carcinogens by the World Health Organization and the US EPA. In a controlled industrial setting, these grave risks are managed through sophisticated, multi-stage, and extremely expensive air pollution control, APC systems. A modern waste-to-energy facility might employ afterburners operating at temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius to ensure the complete destruction of any dioxins formed, followed by systems that inject activated carbon to absorb any remaining toxins, and finally, fabric bag filters that can capture over 99% of particulate pollutants before they are released into the atmosphere. These systems represent a significant portion of the capital and operating cost of a plant, and their effectiveness is subject to continuous monitoring and stringent regulation. Instead of venting them into the atmosphere, Julian Brown's reactor is designed with an advanced gas trapping and scrubbing system. The toxic gases are captured, cooled, and reprocessed so that only useful hydrocarbons remain while dangerous emissions are neutralized. By integrating this safety feature, Julian has addressed one of the biggest criticisms of waste-to-fuel technologies, proving that his invention is not just efficient, but also environmentally responsible. However, the exact nature and independently verified effectiveness of this homemade system remain a critical, unanswered question. A friend of mine proposed that Julian should use a thunderstorm plasmoid generator to reduce or eliminate harmful exhaust emissions. Another reason I found is one where someone was saying that the process of converting plastic to oil is not any help to the environment. Their argument is that when you convert plastic, you release a lot of toxic gases into the atmosphere. Then once you refine the output into gasoline and use it in your vehicle, you are still burning the fuel and emitting large amounts of carbon dioxide which contributes to global warming. To them, the whole process is even more harmful than just leaving the plastic lying around. But, as we said before, Julian Brown has been working on better ways to reduce environmental pollution during the pyrolysis process. And with his advanced gas trapping and scrubbing system, this concern is being addressed. That makes his solution a good step toward dealing with the plastic menace we face today. So when you put it all together, the energy challenges of pyrolysis in the past, the opposition from oil giants, the problem of harmful gases, the narrative of bias favoring big corporations, public skepticism about plastic, misconceptions about pyrolysis oil, environmental concerns about carbon emissions, along with regulatory barriers, investor caution, and media disinterest, you start to see why Julian Brown's achievement is being overlooked. Yet his solar-powered continuous microwave pyrolysis reactor could be one of the most significant environmental innovations of our time. The real question is, will the world continue to ignore him?
Or will people finally pay attention to what could be a turning point in solving both the plastic crisis and the demand for cleaner fuels? 